essential training series for architects. In this tutorial, we will focus on interior rendering. The lighting looks good from the outside and has a realistic appearance. But if we zoom to the inside of the room, you will notice it is dark and has some areas with little to no light reaching it. We can fix this by rotating the sun in a direction that allows more light to enter the room. Start the real-time rendering to see the result. Now it is good. More light rays are entering the room, but they are parallel with the room walls so I am going to change the horizontal position to get a better artistic look. The sunlight looks good. You can still see dark areas inside the room. This is due to not having enough light going deep and bouncing off the walls in the room. This is where we can use a light portal Light Portal's main function is to intensify the sun and skylight in an area and allow the light rays to bounce in just a specific area, unlike the usual case where lights bounce throughout the whole scene. This means that we can force sun and skylight to go inside our interior shot instead of lighting the whole scene. Go to the interior workbench and then to Portals. You can see we have two options. The first allows us to create a new light portal and add it to the scene, and the other transforms a window or a glass door to a light portal. I'm going to create a new one in this scene. What we have is a rectangular shape with an arrow. The arrow indicates where the sunlight is going to be cast. I am going to rotate the portal and point the arrow towards the interior of the scene. Also. I will position it and scale it to cover the front of the structure from where the light is going to enter the room. This looks good. Next step is activating the interior renderer, which allows the light portal to function. You can control the light depth, which is the number of bounces the light ray makes before vanishing, and the specular depth, which controls the amount of bounces reflection makes before dimming out. Let us render the scene now and have a look at the result we have. You can see how the deep areas now have better lighting just by placing a light portal. Zooming out shows the actual effect of the light portal. See how the area in front of the light portal has all the light rays focused on it, while the other areas have almost no light rays bouncing off it. I am going to zoom back into the room, and I will increase the light strength of the sun and sky system. Since I am happy with how direct sun rays hit the ground, I will increase sky strength to give a boost to the ambient lighting in the room. Increase the sky strength to a value of 7 and give it some time to render. The result looks great. We have balanced light throughout the whole room and we didn't have to add fill lights or fake lights inside the room. Only with the use of light portals and the interior renderer. Additional optional controls of your light are available in the Image Effects tab. You can see two controls to your left, Gamma and Brightness. 
you can tweak your render by moving those sliders. Note that they are post-processing functions. They will not affect the rendering process, so you can change them while rendering without interrupting the rendering process. Next, we will talk about interior lighting using artificial sources, not the sun. Say we want to render this room with lighting set to night lighting. First, we go to our Environments tab and click on Sun. Since it's nighttime, we won't need to render a solar disk, so let us just disable that. Also, drop the strength of the sun to zero. Drop the value of sky strength. Go to Albedo and change the color to a purple-blue hue, and drop the value to a low 30. Hit F4 on the keyboard and notice the exterior light we have. It is very similar to a night ambient light, which you would get from the moon's light or perhaps city lights. What we're looking for is a bluish subtle environment, and I think we have achieved that. If we examine the ceiling in this room, we can see that there are spotlights installed. What we can do is to use those spotlights as our main light source. Let us go to the scene building workbench and click on lights. Two options are available for our interior lighting, which are using spotlights or IES lights. Let us click on spot. A spotlight was created with a cone showing the direction of the light emitting by it. With the spotlight selected, go to Move and click on Snap to Object, and then click on the spotlight to automatically have the composer place it correctly. On the right, we have the light source controls. The color changes the color of the emitted light. Power controls the intensity of the light. Blend controls the softness of the light at edges. Cone Angle sets the angle of coverage for the spotlight. Let us set Blend to 1, Cone Angle to 90, and the Power to around 1500. It is dark. So let us pump it up to 8,000. We now have a sufficient amount of light coming from this source. What we need to do now is create a light for each spot. We can go to Object with our light selected and click on Copy. This would create an independent light source, but if we click Instance, it would create a replica of our light source sharing the same attributes as our original light source. Let us delete the copied light and create an instance instead. Go to Move, Snap to Object, and click on the glass cover of our spotlight. Create another one, following the same steps as before. Now notice that if I change the power of any of those lights, the other lights will have the same change applied to them. 
and that is because they are instances of each other. This will save you in case you need to change any attribute for the light, and instead of going to each light individually and changing its value, you can change the value of one instance, and the changes will be applied to all the other instances connected to it. Fix the camera position and press F4 on your keyboard. We're getting good results now, but as you can see, the light source itself doesn't appear to be emitting any light, it just looks like a piece of glass. To fix that, click on the glass cover of our spotlight and look at the material panel. You see a glass material assigned to it. Go to the Material tab and click Show Materials to, to open the Scene Materials Manager. With the glass surface selected, click on Selected Objects in the Scene Materials window to display the material for this object. Click and drag this material to an empty area in the Scene Material window to duplicate the material. Click on the new material and change its type from Thin Glass to Emitter. You will have a material now that emits light from an object. Set the color to white. As for the other two options in the emitter material, the strength controls the amount of light this object transmits, while the visible strength controls the brightness of the object itself. Let us set the value for both attributes to 10. Now, I need to apply this material to all the spotlight's covers. Hold Control on your PC keyboard or Command on Mac and select all the glass covers. Once you have them all selected, Right-click on your new material and choose Apply. Press F4 to render the scene, and notice how the spotlight looks more realistic than before. Let me go to my camera and just increase the field of view a bit to get a better camera coverage. I will discuss camera options in more details later in this course. The result we have now is pretty good. The interior renderer is doing its job and eliminating dark areas by bouncing the light multiple times. My only concern would be the shape of the lights. It looks good but slightly boring. What we can do is use IES lights instead of the regular spotlights. Let me turn off the renderer and delete the spotlights that we have to replace them with IES lights. As shown in the IES library, we have a massive collection of IES light shapes that we can choose from. Click on IES light to create one and place it. You can click Browse to change the IES light's shape to any shape you need, or you can choose to create a light from the library by dragging it to the scene. Duplicate the light as instances by going to the Object tab and click Instance or press Ctrl and T on your keyboard, Command and T on your Mac. Place all the lights in their desired locations. Set the value to a 150 and press F4 to render the scene. It looks good and it has a better shape. You can experiment with the light shape and choose the best option for the scene.
Let us fix this one IES light. It has the same power as others, though it covers a small area. I am going to delete both lights and replace them with lower power lights. Let us try 30 for power. Still looks bright. Try 5. Much better. I am going to lock the view so that any changes won't interrupt the render. Go to Render, Image Effects. From this tab, I can apply multiple post-processing effects. We have the gamma and brightness controls as we mentioned earlier. We also have the vignetting effect, which will darken the corners of our image. Grayscale, which removes hue values and displays the render in black and white. Edges, as you can see, creates a sketchy look. Blooming polishes the render and brings out the highlights in it. It has a blur radius control. Brightness and opacity sliders. The last three effects controls the mood of the image. Cool effects tints the color towards blue. Warm effect tints them towards a yellow-red hue. And finally, the saturation controls the color saturation in your image.